Hey guys, what's up? So let's go ahead and talk about some programming stuff. Like what have I been working on? I've been very busy. I've been very busy with a new job, uh, doing a lot of React, ES6, uh, all the modern day tools, uh, Babel, Webpack. And uh, in the process, I, I think that, that React is, uh, is a pretty good technology set, but I do understand people's attraction to something like Vue. Um, when I was having lunch today, I talked to several other developers and I asked them their opinion on Vue. A few of you guys have asked me my opinion on Vue, and, and, uh, and my opinion is I, I barely touched it, but the, the moments that I have spent time with it, I'm basically like, well, it doesn't really do anything any better than like React or Angular. In fact, it does a lot less. It's really trying to be the Vue, um, which is what React started out as being, in my opinion, and, uh, and then React has now kind of merged into this whole you know, ecosystem when you combine it with other tools like uh, Redux or uh, React Router or React Router Redux. Um, basically the whole front end system that, uh, that that React is now capable of. And now React has this new React Fiber thing that's uh, making their engine uh, a lot faster. And one of the things that uh, should be mentioned on what React did with React Fiber, which is much better than what we've seen with like Angular 2 or Python 3, um, and they didn't make everything all back, backwards and compatible. You know, like there used to be um, with pro, Perl programmers, Perl used to pride itself on being a language that like always considered backwards compatibility when updating new versions. Um, and it seems like, you know, with Angular 2, like that completely went by the wayside. It's like, we're going to completely rewrite this thing. You don't have to learn TypeScript. Uh, everything that you thought you knew about Angular is going to be completely rethought, redone. And people got pissed off about that because they devote a lot of time. Um, the older you get, the less time you want to spend screwing around learning the same same old wheel. Um, just you know, once again. Uh, but every time you reinvent that wheel, it just starts to turn into like a square stone block. Like we're going back into the stone ages, where it just kind of you know bumps up and down the road. You know, as a picture a square boulder trying to you know to drive like you know, the Flintstones. That's kind of what I think of it. Um, so that's that it's it's funny because we you know we do come up with uh, with uh, old solutions to solve modern problems uh, for some of these problems that have been solved you know decades ago and everything, um, but you know that that's fine that's perfectly fine we all have jobs we have you know we're able to make money and, and build stuff with technology so that's cool but uh, the funny thing is I think is that um, the basically is that most people don't realize when you're when you're just getting started with programming, like you don't want to have to relearn the same thing time and time again, man, because you're not really, you're not really getting anywhere. Like you want to be getting, I think, uh, to be a better programmer. And sometimes when you're kind of learning, oh yeah, I did that with this language and this language, and now we have this new hot language and we're going to do the same damn thing, but we have to learn these new terminologies, these new roles and things. It's part of being a programmer, it really is. Um, but it, so it's not that big of a deal, especially if you get paid over a hundred thousand dollars to do it. But um, you can you can understand though when like when you only have a certain amount of time um, you know time is something that no matter how much money you have or how much you get paid you can't get more of it so if you're spending more time learning something that isn't really making you a better or more productive programmer um, you know and, and you know that like you just know that based on experience and, t and things like that that you know it's um, you know, that can be frustrating I think sometimes uh, so so what so what is my opinion on Vue? I mean I think Vue looks a lot like uh, like Knockout man. I, I think that it sticks to being the Vue. It's supposed to like do some of the things that React does well even better and and that's great. I think something like Vue though is going to be popular just because we need something easier for a lot of web developers. Like a lot of web developers a long time ago used to be able to just jump right in with HTML. Um, you know they they kind of relied upon a lot of the back end programmers that got paid more money to do a lot of things. Uh, but the front end guys were able to use like jQuery, HTML, do some CSS, and um, and then like there was this kind of this shift that happened pretty much after the responsive web design craze of about 2012, 2013, where we went into this like full stack front end system, and that really I think starts with Node uh, being released in what 2009. Um, so Node allowed you to write JavaScript on the back end, but also on the front end. So you know, people that were able to get crafty with something like a Node.js back end, they also were very crafty with a lot of what they could do on the front end uh, using JavaScript. And it just seems like we took, you know, front end uh, development and made it much more difficult. Now, the positive for people like me and other people that do this stuff is that you get paid a lot of money to write React and write Angular. And if you can keep up with TypeScript and all this other stuff, uh, you get paid a lot of money. And, and, and 
I know for a fact that older developers are just as good as some of the newer developers. Now, maybe with you know the the fresh mindset and things like that, that it's it's easier being younger, having less um, you know less responsibilities probably helps and things like that. But uh, the fact is though that that older programmers in many cases are going to be better than you younger programmers. It's just because they have a lot of experience. They've been practicing logic day in and day out. Um, now, if they're a bad programmer. Uh, when they were 20 and they're still bad at, at 35 because they've never had a passion for programming, they just kind of do it day to day, uh, then that doesn't really count. That's not really who I'm referring to. I'm talking about some of the passionate developers I've worked with that are in their 40s, um, even in their 50s, that, that like they really know their stuff. I mean, if, if you went up to Guido Van Rossum and were like, hey, dude, you don't know anything about modern day Python, uh, it would probably be pretty insulting to somebody who actually uh, created Python, but he may not be in like the inner workings day in and day out of the new Python language. He might be, I don't know, I don't follow it that well, but um, it, it's just like no, no company, no younger developer is going to like, you know, piss on Guido Van Rossum for uh, not being up to date with the latest uh, standards of Vue uh, or Angular 2 using TypeScript or something like that. So I think people need to, to I guess temper their expectations of what they think other programmers should be doing or where they should be at. Um, and, and, and that's another reason too why it's very difficult in this industry to have a senior developer and a junior developer uh, and, and then have this mindset where well maybe the senior is doing the same thing that the junior has been doing uh, you know, uh, well not, maybe not even a junior, let's just say a typical software engineer versus a senior software engineer. If the senior software engineer is uh, is using a fresh product that's only been out for a year, and the then th that means that the, that the regular software engineer is going to have just as much experience, if not more, with that newer stuff than you know the older guy. But if they want to transition to more of a you know a SQL Server backend, like where they need to start writing like maybe raw SQL, or they start getting out of ES6 and start having to write you know JavaScript, or even getting into Python or Django or some of these other more you know more more specialties. There are things there that, that you learn along the way that, that make you a better developer. So that is one of the reasons why you have senior developers. There's also the team leadership aspect of things. There's, um, you know, not being a dick, really. I mean, it, you, it's, a, it's a trait to be learned. I mean, there are programmers out there that are, that are just huge dicks. They really are. They, because, you know, they're, 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 it's a very egotistical field. Um, you look at some of the better developers. They have no patience for the juniors and things like that. Uh, they don't understand that they were once, you know, in that position, and um, and and it's I guess so. You know, one some of the reasons why you could be a senior developer uh, and and you know maybe be on par with some software developers, you know, in a in a lower tier, but still get paid more is uh, because of those reasons. It, it's it's all around experience. It could be business experience. It could be um, once again, it could be how you mentor people. The, the fact that you're not a dick. The fact that you're helpful and uh, and things like that. So. That's a lot of uh, things that you have to take into consideration when you're getting into the industry. Like you may run along, um, and, and I did this as well when I was first getting in. Um, I was uh, working with some developers at Geico, and I was like thinking, uh, "Wow, like I'm surprised that they don't know some of this basic JavaScript or jQuery or you know, or, uh, uh, or some of this, you know, some of the advanced CSS stuff that I was doing at the time." And I remember I was surprised by that, but then I wasn't taking into consideration the fact, you know, they they had eight or ten years experience and. Uh, you know things like you know Cobalt and and then also writing like C sharp and and doing web forms and uh, even MVC.net or just C sharp in general. So um, I guess what I could say um, is that you should caution yourself on like how you try to stack up against other other developers that are out there because I've been guilty of doing the same thing where I look at like I said other developers I'm just like yeah I think I'm just as good but uh, and you might be you you might be but there's a reason why. Um, you know, they were hired. Maybe they're just a better negotiator, and they got a better salary and a better title because, you know, they were a better negotiator. It can come down to that. It can come down to sometimes, you know, the the time that you get brought in. Like, um, you know, sometimes you're at the right place at the right time. You, you talk to the right people. Maybe, uh, you know, there's just there's a lot of different things that that separate. I think uh, regular software developers from senior developers, and then there's also um, a lot of similarities too. So. Uh, just keep that in mind. That would be my, my basic advice uh, for this video. So, I mean, what we should be doing is we should be trying to figure out how to make technologies a little bit easier, a little bit more uh, productive. And uh, I'm not quite sure that we're there. Um, you know, like I said before, I, I think that, you know, tools like React and things like that, you know, reusable components, um, 
even uh, you know, web components with Shadow DOM, if you're looking at Polymer or something like that. Uh, I am curious if those things are going to end up uh, manifesting themselves into something that is like widespread. Uh, right now, though, I really feel like we're in somewhat of a, a waiting period as far as like what the next next technology boom is going to be. I don't actually see anything on the horizon right now. Like uh, I've been I've been around uh, for the dot com bubble. Um, I, I've been around for uh, the mobile app bubble. Well, you know, there was a mobile app time where like everybody was trying to get into mobile development. There was a time where we were all focusing on responsive web design, like we were cre creating these new standards and then like Bootstrap came along and pretty much simplified all of that. And, and then really when that happened to me, it, it felt like there was a lot of like uh, UI UX designers that ended up losing out on a lot of work because it was like, well, why am I going to buy some template that is all like, you know, overly complicated when I can just kind of learn the Bootstrap way of doing things. If I lay things out in the Bootstrap way, like I can build uh, usable websites that are that, that work on you know all all different different types of devices. So in my opinion, uh, maybe just my own personal interest changed over the time. But uh, there was a time I used to be interested in in reading things like uh, Smashing Magazine, trying to focus on the latest UX standards. And um, whatever happened along the way, I guess I became like more of a back end developer, and now I'm more of a front end engineer. I would say, um, but I lost interest in all of that stuff. And and even though I still, you know, I, I keep an open ear to that, those types of things. And, and I see what the trends are and I see, um, you know, some of the websites out there and it's just like, I, um, I'm just kind of waiting for like, I think the next, uh, you know, big thing to come along and I hope to, you know, jump into that. But, you know, what is that next thing? Is it Vue? Is it React? Is it Angular? Uh, those things are already here. Um, so really you should be focusing on whatever the jobs are. You know, if there's more Angular positions, uh, then you should probably focus on that if you don't have a job, you know. So it's like uh, I, I would I would think that that is sound advice, or uh, you know, like I've talked about before, you got to build stuff, you got to make things, and um, and that's how you can really separate yourself as well from uh, you know other other developers and prove that you're a senior. You know, if you have tools, open source projects, whatever it may be. Uh, if you're like me though, now you don't even have enough time to get involved in some of that stuff. So it's like. Uh, you can't hold that against a developer either. If a, de if a developer can get his job done and go home uh, after eight or nine hours or whatever, and and then uh, and 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 he's not coding on the side, and um, that that should be perfectly acceptable as well. So I don't know, man. Um, th this is an interesting industry to be in. As long as you're learning, um, you feel like you're learning each day. Uh, hopefully, you're learning while getting paid, because that's the best way to learn, in my opinion. Um, but um, as far as like trying to become a senior developer, just uh, you know keep at it. Uh, make sure you, you take into a lot of considerations uh, the the you know the experience that that person has, whether it's uh, maybe in, in an unrelated thing, not just necessarily the code uh, or language or framework that you're working with right then and there. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe. I appreciate all the support, and you have a good day. Bye. Hey guys, so I just want to take a moment to mention that this video is sponsored by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. So if you guys are learning. Um, how to program, trying to get your foot into the industry. Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is an intensive 12 and 16 week um, course system that is going to teach you how to become uh, a programmer using a lot of modern technology, a lot of modern tools and things that are, that are being used by companies, which is, includes Git and GitHub, um, tools like jQuery, which is still widely used in the corporate world. Uh, they're also using a lot of new, uh, newer libraries like AngularJS, and they're going to show you how to use a node stack. Um, so it's an intensive one-on-one -on -one, uh, you're gonna have instructors like giving you intensive feedback and uh, it's definitely something to check out and this video is sponsored by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp so thank you for them or thank you to them hey guys so this video is also sponsored by site 123 so if you guys are looking to build a website quick and fast or you know somebody that um, needs a website up and running if you don't want to deal with DNS servers, uh, domain purchasing, setting up your own server or, or webmail or anything like that. Um, site123 is going to make it a much uh, easier process in order to get an actual website off the ground. So whether you have a blog or you're interested in trying to get your portfolio out there, showcase what it is that you're all about, what you can do, um, Site123 has you covered there so make sure you guys check them out. The description um, tab below also has their links so that you can find out more information from site one, two, three.